Albert Einstein died on April 18, 1955, after appearing at Princeton Hospital the day before due to chest pain. The physicist died of an aortic abdominal aneurysm and after his death, his brain was removed and stolen. Dr. Thomas Stoltz Harvey performed the autopsy on the physicist seven hours after his death. After determining the cause of death, Harvey removed, measured, and weighed Einstein's brain. The doctor later claimed that he had permission to perform the autopsy and assumed that he wanted to study the scientist's brain. So far, however, no documents have been discovered to allow the autopsy. Dr. Harvey preserved Albert Einstein's brain in formalin and removed his eyeballs, then took the rest of his body to the crematorium. The removal of the brain and eyeballs were against the last wishes of Albert Einstein, who had given precise instructions for his death. The physicist wanted to be burned with the brain inside the body, and the ashes to be secretly scattered. Moreover, Dr. Harvey had no right to keep the physicist's brain. His only responsibility was to determine the cause of his death, as he was neither a neurosurgeon nor a brain specialist. There are speculations about two possible reasons for the doctor to remove the brain, one of which was that it was put by Einstein's personal doctor, Harry Zimmerman. Zimmerman never publicly acknowledged this, although he asked for the physicist's brain after it was removed from the body. The second possible reason is that Dr. Harvey was, stolen for the time being, during the autopsy, considering a study of Lennon's brain in 1926. After being assaulted by requests to study the brain, Dr. Harvey, along with a technician from the University of Pennsylvania, cut the brain into thousands of slices and 240 pieces. He gave some of the pieces to Dr. Zimmerman, keeping the rest to himself. When requested by other researchers, he refused to give them the organ, saying that, it is one year after graduation. Harvey divorced his wife and moved to Wichita, Kansas, where he is believed to have kept his brain in a cider box under a bare refrigerator. For the next 30 years, Harvey moved several times, keeping Einstein's brain on him, although he never published any studies on it. The story of Einstein's brain attracted public attention several times, once in 1978, in a regional magazine in New Jersey. At first he didn't want to tell me anything, then he admitted that he has a brain, that he is right in the room where we were. He went to a box that said, Costa Cider, and took out two jars containing the remains of the brain that changed the world, wrote journalist Stephen Levy. In 1985, 30 years after Einstein's death, the first study of his brain was published by Marion Diamond at UCLA after he received fragments of the physicist's brain. A few years later, Harvey met Einstein's niece, Evelyn Einstein, in California, where he took the physicist's brain in several jars stored in a bag in the trunk of the car. Although the doctor forgot his brain at the scientist's niece's home, she returned it to him. Before he died in 2007, Thomas Harvey donated Einstein's brain to Princeton Hospital, where the whole story began. Currently, the Mutter Museum in Philadelphia is the only place where part of Einstein's brain is on display. Can you believe that? How could you do such a thing to a man, especially since he was against it? If you like my channel you can give me others ideas for more history info. Also, because I am at the beginning of the road with this channel, a little support from you would also help me with a like and subscribe.